Hello and welcome to the Flower of Light Mystery School podcast number four. Um, the classic records, past lives and the hologram. So, um, again, I'm joined by Christine and Charlotte. Hello, Christine. Good morning. Good morning. And Charlotte. So, um, the last time we spoke about the book of Becoming Light. And I just want to really tie that in with what we're going to talk about today. So, as I mentioned, the Akashic Records, um, Past Lives and The Hologram. So, the book of Coming Forth by Light is, is in its entirety what was taught in the mystery schools. Through different mediums, if you like. Um, one medium was to communicate to the conscious mind, the 3D mind or the ego mind, if you like. And another medium was to um, communicate this information to um, the subconscious aspect of, of ourselves, which is our creator consciousness. And th that was um, the symbol for the mystery schools was the three eyes. So we have the right eye of Ra, the left eye of Toth and the middle eye of Horus. And in the left eye of Toth was taught the feminine aspect. Um, not so much taught the feminine aspect, but the information was taught in the feminine way to communicate to that aspect of us, which is our subconscious and our creator conscious consciousness. Um, the right eye of Ra was the masculine aspect of the mysteries. And that was communicated to us in a way that our conscious mind our ego mind would understand. And so when you combine both, both understandings of the subconscious and the conscious communicated in both those different ways, you consciously make a quantum leap to a higher dimensional level, which brings you to the single eye and the eye of Horus. So the journey to that point, if you like, and that would bring me to also the part where I was talking about Akhenaten and it is Akhenaten actually that established the feminine aspect of the mystery schools in ancient Egypt. So in order to reach that single point of vision, if you like, of being able to see from that higher aspect, the eye of Horus, the higher aspect, the third eye, um, been able to make decisions we discussed in the last podcast about if we get the ego out of the way that we can um, communicate with the higher self and therefore make uh, decisions in this and that will affect this 3D world because after all we are looking to bring this knowledge down into the third dimension. Mm. It's not about um, knowing all this information and then floating off into space in your mind or even physically dropping out of society and life because that does happen. Um, no, this is about being a master in all realms and you have to be successful in the third dimension as well as the rest. So being successful here means bringing this information down into, into your third dimensional life. Mm. Um, and when we say getting the ego out of the way, we're not talking about annihilating the ego because we need the ego. The ego is... Survival. Nature doesn't give us survival. <laughs> the yeah. power here. Exactly. Thanks, Charlotte. Yeah. And the ego, or sorry, rather nature, or the neater, um, does not provide us with anything. We ourselves, ultimately, right. it's yeah. ourselves. We don't provide ourselves with anything that we don't need. So the ego is important, but for certain things, it, it's, it's limitation. It is limitation. It is our limitation consciousness. And while it's important up to a certain point, it does need to be moved out of the way in order to proceed but that doesn't make it bad it just makes it it's gone past its sell by date if you like we need just to move it out of the way <laughs> <laughs> so um so this was the mystery schools this is how the information was taught in the mystery schools it was taught um in a way that the conscious mind our male energy would understand and in a way that our subconscious and our female energy would understand mm -hmm. and when those both those understandings were were um integrated by the student or the initiate, whatever you like to think of them as, then they made a quantum leap, which was symbolized by the third eye. They made a quantum leap into those um, higher realms um, and into the quantum realm, if you want to think of it that way. 
Answer that, can I ask a question? Yeah. I've, uh, so basically, this is the symbolism of the child, right? So the third, the higher, the activation of the third eye is the divine child. Yeah, Horus was the child. And, um, and so Horus was the child of Isis and Osiris. And Horus was conceived magically. Right. That's the story that yeah. we're told. Mm -hmm. um, that story is told throughout the temples in Egypt, but... Um, I suppose particularly in Abydos, Seti First Temple yeah. and Dendra Temple. Dendra Temple would be mostly where the story of the conception of the divine child is yeah. told. But it's also told in Luxor Temple. As I mentioned, it is, it's the basis of all this alchemy. Mm. So the divine child, and that's a good point, thanks Christine. The mm -hmm. divine child, Horus, is not necessarily representing a child or a human being even for that matter the divine child is the product of manifestation the divine child is anything that a consciousness having combined or integrated its male and female aspects yeah and made this quantum leap that consciousness now has the ability to manifest its thoughts right that's what i meant like the so it's every thought integration that you and then once you awaken the the third eye, you can manifest directly from your higher self. Exactly, right? yeah. And and every manifestation is considered the child. Yes. Yeah. Would be considered Horus. Yeah. Anything you make or build or whatever is Horus. Yeah. The energy of Horus. Yes. Why is that? The, the manifestation. Because when they talk about, you know, the conception and birth of the divine child. Oh. OK, so that's the basis of, say, for example, um, the story of Jesus, yeah. Mary and Joseph. Yeah. And we're told the immaculate conception. So that means conception without sexual intercourse taking place. Yeah. So I mentioned in one of the other podcasts about Luxor Temple, and it talks about how the child is conceived through no sexual act. Mm -hmm. And it's described in such a way that if you remember, we said the temple of Luxor, um, if you were to look at it, down on it from a height, looks like a person lying on the ground. Yeah. So we're told on the inscriptions on the walls in the temple of Luxor that the conception of the divine child, which, as we said, is any manifestation mm -hmm. that um, an enlightened person can. Yeah, because you're like creating it, right? You're creating it. Yeah. OK. So the Immaculate Conception is really it's alchemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a mystery school teaching mm. and it's teaching <clears throat> the person, the student, how to how to integrate its male and female aspects mm. so that when they come together, they create the divine child. Mm. And that divine child is, in one sense, your higher self. Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also anything that you <clears throat> manifest into this 3D world using this information, yeah. using this knowledge, using the skills and abilities that you um, achieve yeah. or that you discover within yourself. Yeah, and being aware and exactly. sharing that. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. So the Immaculate Conception is really talking about mm. the art of manifestation. It's the alchemical teaching, the mystery school teaching of manifestation. And that, anything that... Um, an enlightened person manifests is considered the divine child. Okay. Because, because, and let me stress this, because once you have um, worked through all, and it, it was called the great work because it is a great work. It's yeah. not something that happens even in one lifetime. Yeah. This is um, spans through many lifetimes. The work, the alchemical mystery school work of bringing yourself to this enlightened point takes place through many lifetimes it's not even ever completed in one life oh no and so it's called the great work because it is work yeah it is and it's hard work and only those who persist mm -hmm. really persist yeah. will um <clears throat> go any way to achieving, achieving these, these kind of like self-development in terms of a soul not yeah. a physical body even yeah 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 because we're more or less um <clears throat> 
programmed, I think I want to say. I think I'm using that word purposely. Like we're yeah. programmed yeah, yeah, yeah. today in our three day world to think of ourselves as just a body. Yeah. yeah. That's all there is. Yeah. yeah. And that Definitely. we live in um an experience or a reality, if you want to say, that has a beginning, a middle and an end. So <clears throat> that's called that's finite thinking. Yeah. And in this 3D reality, we think in very small increments of time. We think in terms of days, weeks, months and years. Mm-hmm. We don't think in terms of Cycle. infinity. Yeah. yeah. Your average infinity. person does not think in terms of infinity. Mm. It thinks in terms of lunchtime. Yeah. What time do I finish work at? Yeah. yeah. It's thinking in terms of next week. Yeah. You know, sm- very small increments of time. And it's also man-made measures of time. Ma- because t- t- time doesn't exist at all. Time is, a, is exactly a, a man-made construct. There well, is and, no time. and the whole thing is, like Charlotte was just saying, cycles. Like the only thing that yeah. really exists are the cycles of the sun, the moon, yeah. the growth. That's what we, that's... That's nature. <coughs> if you it's consider... But that's real nature. time. <laughs> yeah. And if you consider what time is, time is just what you said. Time is counting the amount of times that the earth goes around the sun. Yeah. It's a cycle. That's a year. We call that a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So here's the question. Why are we counting something that just happens continually? <laughs> to what end? Like, you know? Well, when did... Uh, like it, it's infinite. Because it's infinite. <laughs> it just keeps happening, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. Earth, the, the earth keeps going around the sun. If if we want to... Uh, okay, I know there's going to be people at this point saying, but the earth is flat. <laughs> I'm talking from a point of view that we're assuming the earth is not flat, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that I don't. Uh, th- and that I haven't thought about that or looked into it I have an open mind your mind doesn't work unless it's open but I'm not discussing that in this particular podcast so what yeah. I'm saying is from the point of view that the earth goes around the sun it does it infinitely and continually so what is the point in counting? Well as far as I can see the only point in counting time in that way is because of the industrial revolution and people yeah. moving from an agrarian connected to nature lifestyle to a lifestyle where you have to go into a building and work as a widget in somebody else's greater idea you know so it's basically even more so man-made yeah it's it's for the it's for control yeah Yeah. so um so really all of the um knowledge let's say of alchemy all of the knowledge of the emerald tablets all of the knowledge of what would be described as the science of what many people refer to as Atlantis. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people don't like that word, but it's a, a good word to describe. Most people understand when we say Atlantis, we're talking about um, high technology yeah. that was once present and, high and is not now. <laughs> and is yes. not now. And even, I know a lot of times I, do, I, I would say ancient technology um, and ancient sites, but the truth is we actually don't know how ancient or not these places are. Yeah. And we don't know how long ago, Yeah, in truth, how long ago, we actually lost all this knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Because it may not have been as long ago as we're been made to think. Yeah, yeah you have to have an open, sceptical mind in terms of everything, <laughs> even like institutional history, all this kind of thing. You yeah. have to, for me, when this all happened for me years ago, the one, th- and I'm a from a very I'm an artist in a very academic background but I had to throw away all my years of reading and loving yeah, and research absolutely. because I am a I love research yeah um mm-hmm. and say I know nothing and then I mean that really sets you free which yeah. is like you're not trapped in anyone's box mm-hmm. of how you're meant to be thinking about a situation yeah. when you throw that away and you say I'll take what I want from it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and move forward then you have a like a freedom to be creative and turn the problem on its head and look at it from a whole different angle. Exactly. It's like, it is freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But as I mentioned, I was talking about there, just to, yeah. bring, to bring it back to what I was yeah, saying sure. about the idea of when we think in linear time, yes. you know, and we call it linear time. Yeah. And what I mentioned was we consider in linear time that we have a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm-hmm. So what I want to tie that into is just the visual, if you can imagine it in your mind, of the linear time frame as a straight line. Yes. Okay, so mm-hmm. um, I mentioned in one of the podcasts that a straight line in geometry represents male energy. Mm. Yes. So a s- straight lines and angles in geometry represent male energy. And why am I saying geometry? Because this language is written in geometry. Mm-hmm. It's written in numbers. All alchemy. If you want to understand alchemy, the mystery schools, if you want to understand the science of ancient Atlantis, if you want to understand 
this particular science, you've got to understand symbols, geometric symbols. You've got to understand geometry and you've got to understand the language of numbers and how this information is communicated. And I would even say sounds like... Uh, sound and light. Yeah, sound yeah. and light, yeah. Um, and that's the more the, the other kind of aspect of this information as we work with inside the when we're actually in the sites if you like. yeah well that's the thing i remember being in the great pyramid and the resonance is just yeah oh, mind yeah. well they're all expansive. sound yeah they're all sound resonators the all sound the they are sound chambers all the ten, all the sites i mean sorry yeah. not just pyramids no no everywhere so if we consider linear time as a straight line mm-hmm. and okay let me ask the question rather than saying it if you were asked to think of a shape that would represent infinity, what shape would you think of? The infinity symbol. <laughs> number the infinity number symbol. eight. Number very eight. Good, very good. <laughs> number eight. So Sideways. You think of that as yeah. well? okay, or well. a spiral. I'd actually, well, it's the same thing, really. Yeah. I'd think of a circle. Yeah, yeah of course, yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right, actually. But the infinity symbol is pretty much the same thing. It's a circle <laughs> twisted in the middle. Yeah, exactly. So it never... It's a vortex. Mm-hmm. The, the, the infinity symbol is a vortex. Yeah. So... If we just, in, for this minute, think, yeah. of, a, think yeah. of it as a circle. Think of infinity as a circle, mm-hmm. if you like. And we're talking about linear time as opposed to infinity. Oh. So if we think of linear time as a straight line and infinity as a circle. So just think of this. If we take our circle, which is infinity, and we break it at a point, and we open it out, what do we get? A straight line. Yes. Linear... A linear experience in which we think there's a beginning, a middle and an end. But at one point, that beginning, which is our birth, Mm -hmm. the beginning of that line, and the end of that line, which is our so-called death, Mm -hmm. at one point, if you bring that back into a circle again, Mm -hmm. at one point, that beginning and end is the same thing. Yeah. And every point on a circle is a beginning and an end. Yeah. And every point on a circle is equidistant is equal distant from the center yeah. mm-hmm. there's nothing higher or lower there's nothing closer to the center and there's nothing further away and every point on a sphere which is a three-dimensional circle, circle yeah every point on a sphere is the center of the sphere mm. Yeah. Mm. so well, that goes to me right away I, from our topic. Well, the point is it's not a hierarchy. No, it's a network. It's a network. So therefore, there's not somebody above and below that and below that and below that and below that. So the idea of moving from or into rather this ancient knowledge is taking you out of that linear straight line mm-hmm. and bringing you in to the circle in terms of your consciousness yes. and your ability to um, avail of the infinite potential that you are. Mm. Because while you only are existing in a straight line, you, there's only a limited time. There's Because while you're actually infinite, you're given the, the illusion that you have a limited amount yeah, of time to do something away. yeah you're yeah. giving your yeah. power away and you're also um desperate for time not realizing there is no time you know like so yeah exactly it, it gives you it's emotional turmoil yeah right you think so, you're going to leave your family you're going to lose your friends or you're not you're all together and it's infinite yeah mm-hmm. and so the teachings of the mystery schools were so profound and so threatening to some i suppose because they literally um show teach the, not teach because it's not you know, nobody is teaching anybody anything we Can all we know this reveal we're it. here to remind each other and mm-hmm. so the mystery school teaching was such that it um it talked it discussed it showed the most profound secrets if you like yeah of the 3d world or of our own consciousness which is why am i here i mean most people on the path of discovering themselves of self-discovery and on the path of realizing that there's more to this than what meets the eye if you like um will have the asked the question the third eye yeah. <laughs> no no pun intended um but every one of those people will have asked themselves the question why am i here of course what is life what is this that i'm in what is it you know mm-hmm. um what am i here to do 
you know another that's way of the saying universal that is, what, question what's my that mission? everybody wants to you know, know. Yeah. yeah and then of course the real big one is you know what is death yeah you know so they're the questions that and what happens after death i suppose is, is another big one as well and they're all the questions that this information this knowledge this science because it is all of those things communicates Oh yeah, say it, it to is. the 3D mind because when we come into the 3D world, we forget mm-hmm. all this. You see, so, well, your memory. There, there's a memory. Yeah, there's a memory delete button, if you like. Mm-hmm. That when we come into this 3D world, all the memory of everything that we've ever done. This connects to me f- to the ancient Egyptian, like the duat, like going through the the gates, the pylons, and you need to have. The magical words. The hours, the hours of the, of the, of the duo. 12 hours of the yeah. night. Of, yeah. Yeah. So, and then as we were saying, those, those, um, yeah. So that, wor- that's a good point. Yeah. That part. Where actually the, sounds. So, um, yeah, yeah. That's a very good point, Christine. So, um, I think what you're saying there is that, um, in the, um, book of coming forth by light or becoming light, where yes. there, where the 12 hours of the night mm-hmm. and where it describes, um, how, the initiate or the student or the recently deceased has to um, recite certain names. Yes. In order to pass by or recite certain passwords mm-hmm. in order to um, pass in, take the next step or go into the next hour, if you like. Mm-hmm. And I think the point is that those names and passwords are not as we might think, you know, like names. They're actually vibrations their sounds and vibrations and what those sounds and vibrations actually are are um codes their energy codes or consciousness codes or ascension codes whichever way you like to look at it because they're all of those things and so you know in the bible as i mentioned before i'm not discussing the bible because i'm um a religious person in that way I'm discussing the Bible because it does contain some truth of this ancient information. In the Bible it says, in the beginning was the word. So it is the sound that creates matter. It's your thought, every thought you have creates a sound. And even though you can't hear it, that sound becomes part of what is the Akashic Records. Every manifestation you create in the 3D world, if you like, through the process that we mentioned before. Because the only thing there is to create with is thoughts. That's all. That There is nothing else. And whether you realize you're turning your thoughts into physical reality or not, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You are whether you know it or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that's what's making your consciousness, right? That's what's creating your reality. Yeah. yeah. It's, it doesn't require your belief in it. Yeah. It operates whether you yeah. believe in it or not. Yeah. That, and that's the whole thing. Well, that goes along to the point that, uh, that you know, films and television are all harnessing our power of creativity, these, this amazing, profound, universal power that we have, controlling what we think about and what we feel about. And so that as well is like what I would think of like as the false net. Yeah, yeah. Pretty weird. Yeah, Holly Weird, yeah, Holly Weird, exactly, yeah. And there is, and there is a Druid connection to the Hollywood. Well, as well, yeah. I mean, the staff of the Druids was made from Hollywood, and I mean, Hollywood is in its inception designed to control the mind, yeah. because our consciousness, I should say, because um, our consciousness doesn't understand the part of us that is the feminine, mm-hmm. which is, you know, our creator consciousness, if you like. That's the part of us that knows it's the creator. Yes. Yeah. That's the part of us that is the Akashic Records. And that's the part of us that doesn't need really any uh, convincing. That's We need to allow that to flow into the into our, what you might call our third dimensional experience. And so I suppose another way of saying it is bringing heaven to earth. Exactly, yeah. So you're bringing that knowledge uh, down to earth. But... The communication, the form of communication in the third dimension is language. And this goes back to the what we were talking about, the Tower of Babel, and how our language was confused. Mm-hmm. But the form of communication in the third dimension is the spoken language, whether it's French, Italian, Irish, German, it's language. Mm-hmm. And it's a degraded form of communication compared 
to what we're talking about compared to the communication in the higher realms, if you like. Yeah. It's a degraded form of communication. So, in the idea of... Degrading as, just for people who don't understand, degraded as in like... A degraded... uh, Say say it's broadband. It's not as higher dimensional. It's very slow. It's it's very... Yeah, it's very slow. It's a higher... Sorry, a lower... It's not instantaneous. It's not fiber optics. It's it's like old-fashioned. Yeah. The first... (laughs) It's not instantaneous communication. Yes. It's very slow. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, Um, exactly, yeah. Um, And so... The, sorry, I was, the point I was trying to make there has gone out of my head. But the communication is very slow in the third dimension, um, as opposed to in the higher realms where it's instantaneous. You know? Yeah. But um, I just, I don't know, I was trying to make a point there about that, but it's gone out oh, of my head. Well, um, it'll come back. We were just basically... It, it's the, the, uh, the feminine communication, right? That being that it, it does, it's very Oh, it was swift. about Hollywood. Thanks, yeah, Charlotte. Yeah. Um so it was I was talking about Hollywood and how um, our creator consciousness or in other words subconscious if you want to say that mm. or higher consciousness or higher self it's the same name for the same thing mm. doesn't understand the spoken language of the third dimension the our subconscious and higher conscious higher self only understands images it only understands feelings emotions images shapes forms uh, processes it doesn't understand the spoken language so visual it's visual and it's it's sound as well because sound is vibration yeah. what you hear with your ears is sound what you feel is vibration exactly yeah but it's the same thing Maybe. really if you like exactly like very good yeah <laughs> yeah so um so hollywood is really controlling people in the sense through images it's, it's controlling the consciousness of people on earth through images, through sound, which which in turn creates feelings and emotions. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So it's sound and light. The so great we can, sound we can and all light understand show. that. We can all, yeah, that's exactly what it is, because this is the false net which yeah, has been created, net, which is a, a mirror image. It's a degraded, and by degraded, I mean lower energy image. Mm-hmm. Yeah of this higher dimensional crystalline consciousness net that we're talking about. It is the Tower of Babel being knocked down. Right? So the lower dimensional energy and is, is um, using Hollywood, for example. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not saying the lower dimensional energy as in it's something in and of itself that just came out that way. I mean, people who are in... We're all in lower dimensional energy when we're born into the third dimension, for example, and we don't, we haven't remembered all of this ancient information. So we've all been there. Yeah. And what I'm saying is for consciousness and people that are there, um, Hollywood is controlling them through those images, through that sound and light show, using sound and light to trap people in their own emotions. To disconnect them from themselves. Absolutely. To disconnect them from themselves. And the great, the greater and wider mm-hmm. energy field or communal collective consciousness. Yeah. And I don't mean collective consciousness in a new world order, Carl Jung collective consciousness kind of way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just for people who are jumping on that one. Um, I mean it in the universal sense. You know, in order to have harmony, each. If it's a, if it's a musical um, composition. composition mm-hmm. Each instrument within that has to be playing a different note. Otherwise, you don't get harmony. Uh, or the harmonic won't so be So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about high of mind uniqueness. when I say collective consciousness. Yeah. I'm talking about uniqueness within yeah. the whole, yes. which creates the entire The beautiful which is all connected. holographic harmonic universe. Oh, yeah. And so <clears throat> Hollywood, it goes in a large part to controlling the third dimensional mind. I'll put it that way using sound and light but it does so by controlling the feminine aspect of us yeah because um the feminine aspect of us is that part that is only understands images and if you'll notice if you've ever looked at a movie script um there's very little words in it Mm. you know for the actors like if if you actually look at it written down on a piece of paper they say very little they actually say very little. Well, when it's a dire- it's all describing no, yeah. the scenery in the background, and <laughs> yeah, exactly an because you do acting. But the thing is, uh, a director 
just for modern parlance, basically a director starts, a good director starts a movie with a complete storyboard of everything. Yeah. yeah. Visual. Visual. So anyway, what I'm, what I'm just trying to get at is that um, there was a time, and we don't know how long ago, maybe it's not as ancient as we've been told, mm-hmm. that we all understood this. And we were all connected to this higher consciousness whereby we were had the ability to have a third dimensional experience but we all knew it wasn't that wasn't all there was yeah it was an experience or who we were and we had we had the level of consciousness to know that um but that changed and that's what was called the fall the fall of man Mm -hmm. but how long ago really did that happen and that's the spell that in the very first podcast that that i was talking about because like it or not you know the majority of people on the earth um, and I'm including myself at one point in time are under this spell because as you mentioned earlier our history has been rewritten yeah our sacred information has been turned into and I'm not talking about any one particular religion I'm saying religions are used to control and dictate and dominate to incite a sense of fear and guilt and Mm. um, even anger and resentment in people and you know, the, the classic one to divide and conquer. Yes. Yeah. But all of this is based on the sacred information and that's why I'm mentioning things like the Bible. And so I'm just mentioning, you know, the Bible because yeah, I think that you're, well, a lot that of we're all objective. Know. Nobody's pinning anyone against the other. I just they're want all, to mention that that first I'm not religious and I'm not pointing out any particular I just think they're all tools at a certain point. Religion is Don't quote for a, for a level of <laughs> consciousness. When you Yes when you reach a different, higher level of consciousness, you understand what religion is for and it's to control. Yeah. It's used for control. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you actually read, for example, Jesus, you know, is talking about a student of this information or a master, if you want to say, of yeah. this information. But Jesus would have no problem calling himself a student either because everybody is a student, a teacher and a master in one. That's right. Mm-hmm. And that's what... Jesus, the figure Jesus was, that's what he came, what he incarnated onto this 3D earth to do was to put this knowledge, this great work into the Akashic Records to make it available for everybody. Oh, yeah. So that everybody would be able to do the same thing. Right. You know, um, as Jesus did. We were never meant to, uh, to idolize Jesus, mm. to worship Jesus. See him as an equal. We, were, we were meant well, to idealize. That means to do what he did. Exactly. Oh, yeah. okay. Idealize. See yeah. the words, they changed the words. Yeah. <laughs> we were supposed to idealize, which means to follow by example. Exactly. Yeah. But instead, they changed that word to idolize. Mm-hmm. So everybody idolized Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah. instead of following his teaching. You know? And, and Jesus Akhenaten, was a mystery school in this year. I was just going to say, Akhenaten would have been the same. So in my opinion, Jesus was a Knaten. And um, I know I mentioned before um, that, you know, the connection with Moses. But as I mentioned, Moses was a title, which meant heir to the wisdom. It wasn't talking about a particular person. So you could have more than one Moses, you know. Um, and so I mentioned also that it was a Knaten who wrote the hymn to the Aten, which became what we know as the Our Father, the prayer. And it was also Akhenaten who wrote what we would consider the Old Testament and the book of Genesis. So, you know, I personally think the story of Jesus was styled on the life of Akhenaten. Um, Akhenaten was the first person in history to say, I am the son of God. Um, and he also said that we don't need priests as middlemen, that we have a direct connection to our creator. Mm. And that's there's the, where that, the problems began in well, the modern that's era. that's why he moved, part of the reason why he moved. Um, the Exodus, as I mentioned before, um, one of them was of the, all the all was, uh, of Akhenaten's followers out of Luxor and to Tel al where he built his new city. And that was to get away from the Ammon priesthood. But that's a whole different story. That's a different podcast. podcast. <laughs> so, um, so... All the sites around the world, as I mentioned before, contain all this information and it does so in the symbols that are carved into the stone on the inside of the sites 
and it, it the information is contained also in the site itself in the standard unit of construction and it's also contained in whereabouts on earth the the, the um, site itself is placed so what i'm saying is that every site is a dimensional portal there are portals to higher consciousness mm. and there are also what, what you might call stargates because in certainly in ancient egypt and in our ancient irish mythology um, we have a lot of um, reference to star walkers that's and true yeah if you remember that i mentioned that the construction of the sites on the ground the intention the reason for doing that was because they were mirroring heaven on earth so those that were walking through the sites on earth were effectively walking through the stars of heaven that's right as above so below as above so below um, and so that was referred to the he heaven that we're talking about was referred to as the duat or in say Irish um, Irish um, wisdom it was referred to as Tirnanog. yeah so the sites themselves um, and the, actually in Ireland the Nile River Miri, it was the Boyne because that meant the white cow right mm -hmm. and in the Nile okay well. so um, in you know the sites i think what you're talking about is there's we have three sites in ireland um and this was discussed by andy power in the his wonderful book, andy um, power in his book ireland the land of the pharaohs mm. and he made the amazing observation um and i don't think it was he it wasn't just his observation he he found that information from older sources but that the um three sites of newgrange note and doth are aligned in such a way to the Boyan river as the three pyramids of Giza are to the Nile. But in any event, the Nile represents the celestial river in the sky, if you like. And that celestial river in the sky is known as the dark rift in the Milky Way. So if you look up at night and you see the white haze of the Milky Way, you also see a dark band running through the centre. That's called the dark rift of the Milky Way. And that is what the Nile River in Egypt represents. And in Ireland, the Boyan River was known as the it was the uh, Brew and the Bonya. Brew and the Bonya is the brew on the Boyan, but the Bonya Bonya in Ireland means milk. Yeah. So, um, the Boyan was the white um, water of the cow, if you like, because bow like bovine, bovine, mm -hmm. yeah. bovine. Sorry, Boan. Um, and Boan was the goddess of the Boyan. So bovine is reference to, you know, cows and yeah, cow and Irish. yeah, and that, you know, is the connection, of course, but in Egypt. I say white as well. The yeah. hat horse. So that's what it means. Yeah. Bon is white as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the white cow, like the Milky Way. Yeah. So. Um, so the sites, like, for example, the River Nile and the River Boyne, um, the sites, the sacred sites that we're talking about, many of them are aligned along each side of those rivers yeah and that would mirror the stars yeah. that are aligned along either side of the dark rift in the milky way but at a particular point in the cycle right so oh, yeah. it's so where it's it is like the cycle as well it's like taking a photograph exactly all the sites along e all the river all the sacred rivers if you like all over the world the, the rivers all over the world sacred used in this way represent the celestial river yes. of the dark rift yeah. and the sites aligned alongside them are a mirror of the stars that yes. would be aligned along that dark rift at a particular point in time. Wow. So it's a frozen point in time. That's so cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. on the ground. So and they're broadcasting a frequency, like through the point. And all of the sites are like uh, different steps in this like... Yeah. Ascension, Progression. Ascension exactly. process, right? Exactly, so exactly. That's a very good point, Charlotte. Yeah. Each site is an ascension chamber. Mm -hmm. An ascension chamber. So when you go into it, what it does is it makes available, because I'm not saying it's only there in the, in the sites, like it's there mm. all, but because of the way the site is built with its sacred proportions, yeah. the way this information is inscribed on the walls in this sacred language that we talked about, the symbols. Yeah. And the symbols are, are geometric symbols, you know, yeah. using the sacred geometry, the blueprint for creation, and the right. way it's actually placed on the earth. All of those things combined will bring you into a space where it's very easy for your consciousness to be elevated to that 
higher aspect of yourself. So when you go through that journey, you're essentially connecting yourself back to the stars, right? Exactly, back to... And it's well, literally... You really uh, yeah. Well, well you're, you're a Jedi, right? So here's the point is that the those chambers are on the earth, built with the sacred proportions. They have the frequency, so like Antoinette was saying. Yeah. So... It's not your ego that's having this. It's your consciousness yeah. that's harnessing that. So That's a very good point. When you go into the... So you may think, what happened to me? But you had something happen to you. Yeah. Believe me, I know. Yeah, that's a good point. Because when you go into the sacred sites, and that, I mean, when you're going into... The, what I'm just saying is when you go into the sacred sites with, on one of these... Um, with this intention. Yes, yeah. it's the intention. I mean, many people go in and out of the sacred sites. I've seen people doing it in Ireland and Egypt, and they climb on the stones and they run up and down and they shout and they scream and they roll down the they roll down the mound as if yeah. it's a hill. It's a very uh, we just happened to witness that one. So I mean, not everybody. I'm talking about somebody going in specifically with this intention, with doing rever- this great yeah, work. Reverentially, when you do, yeah. remembering, recognizing that. Yeah, yeah. So when you do that, what you're doing is you are reconnecting yourself to the crystalline energy network that we were talking about yeah the diamond light and, and the akashic all record the, right? uh, all the and the, the akashic records and yeah. all the information on the walls is this is the steps or the instructions it's the recipe basically to put in a really low level thing for yeah. how you to, for for you ha- how yeah. to do that yeah mm-hmm. and so all the sites combined to make as we mentioned this energy net yes. if you like yeah because as we mentioned all the sites have an energy a physical um Signature. site made out of stones mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it has the physical site mm-hmm. the, the 3d site made out of stones and whatever but it also has the energy counterpart site above yeah the etheric that is the most amazing thing mm-hmm. yeah As above, so below. well exactly. the energetic pyramid yeah, yeah, inversely yeah, yeah. mirroring the physical 3d pyramid oh, yeah. so that's why when you go into say the great pyramid or whatever you're you're literally in the star chamber because, and then your conscious energy has to activate, right, Anton? It has to activate that mm-hmm. sort of etheric, high dimensional, non physical so pyramid. Like a... So, you, it's your heart, it's not your head, it's your heart that pulls down and activates yourself. Yeah, and it's like, a, like an inverted image, I guess? Yes, like, like a mirror like image. A mirror, but mm-hmm. It's almost like, a, you know, when you're seeing stuff, you know, you see like diagrams of like when you perceived light and you're like yes and it goes into your mind and it flips it yeah so that you're for your vision to decode the light right well your eyes actually turn light into electrical signals yeah 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 so that you can you know but i mean there is nothing out there it's all happening as a hologram inside your head you know that's right so that's the holographic thing which is absolutely amazing that's why we're all star walkers one of the one of the ways that they would show you know um People on this path, for example, and this is just given an example, is say in Newgrange, um, the way the light would shine in on the twenty first of December, and it does it not just on that date. It's it does the whole it on, week. It does it on yeah, um, and so the way the light would shine in to the passageway and illuminate symbols on the wall. Well, they, there would also be a crystal hanging there, absolutely for um, the people who are inside, you know. And so when the light, this is when, you know let me say, at a time when the sites were being consciously used by people who knew what they were doing. Yes. Um, and I'm calling that time Atlantis. So, yeah. just for the want of a word. So, um, they would have used crystal, for example, to teach people going inside that, you know, the light as it shines, the one sunlight as it shines through the crystal. You would the see it light. then radiating all over the walls as the seven-rayed spectrum. Yes. And while the student would be looking at that inside the chamber, because don't forget, before that light comes in to the chamber, if you're standing inside Newgrange, Mm -hmm. if you've ever been in there, it's absolutely pitch dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face. That's it. But when the light comes in, as soon as the light shines in, you can imagine you're in pitch dark. And then all of a sudden, this white light shines in, shines through a crystal, which is effectively a prism. And it breaks down the light in. So you're standing inside with this rainbow all around. Whoa. And you're being instructed on how this light is you. This is your incoming soul. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And as it passes through the crystal. The crystal, I spoke in the last podcast about the pyramid. 
the Great Pyramid of Egypt, representing the crystal. Now, the thing is, your DNA, the geometry of your DNA, is tetrahedral. In other words, the same as the Great Pyramid. Yeah. It's the same shape. The geometry of your DNA is the same shape as the Great Pyramid. In fact, the geometry of the, of the third dimension, if you were to take an average of all the geometric shapes that create matter in the third dimension, the tetrahedron would be the shape, the overall shape wow. for the third dimension. Mm. So if you take the shape of the tetrahedron, which is basically the shape of the Great Pyramid, and as we mentioned, shine the one light through it and see the seven rayed spectrum coming out, that is how in, the, in, in this time that people would, students would be taught inside the site for example that this is the incoming soul it passes through you know our it doesn't pass through it lowers its vibration to That's become correct. the physical shape yeah it, it's so high it has to step itself down yeah and to become those seven rays and then physical matter so the ascension back to that one unity of light, light. light. Mm-hmm. and you know I've been talking about dark and light but Dark and light are actually the same thing. Yeah. It's yeah. just one side of the of the same coin. Oh, you need the light, like the dark like for the, the creation. The circle, right? Exactly. It's like the circle and the straight line. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of this is taught as you, and, and disseminated in the form of geometry. Mm-hmm. So, um, so there's an interesting experiment, actually, okay. and probably a lot of people will already know this. It's called the double slit experiment. And it's where electrons were shot... Um, from an electron gun through two slits with um, and shot at a backboard, you know, a board behind it. Mm-hmm. So the electrons would hit off the backboard like if you were shooting uh, tennis balls mm-hmm. at a, a wall or something. And so what they were looking for was a pattern of those electrons making a pattern on, on the backboard. So now if the electrons were particles, which is what they thought they were, they would make um, patterns of two lines along the backboard as they hit mm-hmm. the wall. Because the two slits were fixed distance apart from each other mm-hmm. and the electrons were passed through them. So what they would see on the backboard would be a, two single lines of where the electrons hit the backboard. That's what they should have seen, but that's not what they did see. What they saw was an interference pattern. And so that led them to look you know, more deeply into what was going on. But anyway, what came out of that experiment was called the observer effect. Because what they discovered was that it was the observation of the scientists doing the experiment that changed the outcome that collapsed the quantum realm mm. it turned what was wave form energy into particle energy because when nobody was around the the um electrons passed through the two slits as waves but when the experiment was being observed they passed through as solid particles. Not solid, but as, as particles, particles. As mm-hmm. almost like individual little things, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so the information yielded from that experiment was that it is consciousness that collapses the quantum realm. It is consciousness. So in other words, everything in the physical manifest universe had to be observed into manifestation by somebody. Yes. By some consciousness. Otherwise it wouldn't be here. Mm. and this again is even though it's modern quantum physics if you like is the ancient this sacred is the teachings information. of the mystery schools and alchemy in fact is chem or chemet was the name for the ancient mystery schools yeah. or sorry for ancient egypt and um it's also where we get our word for chemistry and it's where you know it's not only where the, the name for chemistry comes from it's it's really where um the knowledge for chemistry comes from but for all the sciences you know biology physics and what we're you know what we're looking at now quantum physics and even on into like what we're moving into now the internet things and ai and all that type of thing um and as technology moves forward actually you know the highest and finest technology if you'll notice technology gets faster and smaller you know the things that we we use you know our phones get smaller our laptops get smaller and eventually the actual technology disappears altogether you know Mm -hmm. But not in the way it's happening now, because we're t- what's happening now is in the 3D world is like transhumanism, the combination of AI and humans. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about 
the consciousness of consciousness, the ability for consciousness to create its own reality without the use of any middleman or middle technology or middle anything. And that's what the Akhenaten was talking about. We don't need anything in the middle. We don't need priests. We don't need technology. We don't need any of that. We have direct line to source. And that's what this ancient information is teaching us. And the Akashic Records is basically, if you can imagine, all these ancient sites all over the world make up all the information that is the Akashic Records. But the Akashic Records is unique to each person. And in one of the earlier podcasts, I mentioned that um, the book of coming forth by light, or as it was called by Egyptologists, the book of the dead, um, was actually always produced for the individual it was never it wasn't one size fit all everybody got their own book of uh, coming forth by light or book of the dead so it was unique to the individual and even though all these sites all over the world literally are for everybody to go into they are unique to your specific um, frequency. frequency and and all the information is there for everybody so collectively all over the world the sites the, ancient, the sacred sites that we're discussing are the visual are the visual for what is the Akashic Records. Now, the symbol that would give you the visual for what is the, the energy or the consciousness Akashic Records, the symbol that will give you the visual of what that is, is the geometry that we're talking about. And if you can look at the symbol of the flower of life, that symbol would be the visual symbol of this whole network of energy that we're talking about but it's also the visual symbol of the akashic records now the akashic records is something that you need to tap into in order to see the continuity of memory that i was talking about before because we've all lived and had many experiences in this third dimension and in all other dimensions because we're omnidimensional but we in this third dimension alone we've all had infinite amount of experiences and all those experiences are so that we can remember that we can see the connection between our lives because as i mentioned when we come into the this third dimensional life we have a memory wipe if you like which leaves us not remembering the life we've just previously had now what's the purpose for this the reason for being able to remember past lives is not that you need to remember every single life you've ever lived but if you can remember aspects of one or two or more lives that you have lived, then you know, you know that this is not all there is. And the mystery schools was always about direct experience. You must have your own direct experience of this. You can listen to other people. Other people can be guides to tell you, you know, to advise you maybe for things to do, say places to go. But ultimately, you have to directly experience this yourself. You, because the difference between one that is mortal and one that is immortal is memory. That's all. Just memory. It's what you can remember. Becoming immortal evolves remembering, putting things back together. And that's the story that's embedded in the story of Osiris being chopped up into many different pieces. And then the pieces of them been put back together. So when you put something back together, you remember it. When you take it apart, you dismember it. Okay. So what we're doing is we're remembering. We're putting back these pieces together. Because in the ancient world, the masters of this information were known as the masters of the net. That was one of the things they were known as. The masters of the net. And the net that they refer to is this higher dimensional, higher consciousness net that connects to every other aspect of the universe and dimensions and on and on and on all the way to source. But unfortunately, the construct that we have now in our 3D world is such that if you look at any of the sites that I'm talking about, any of the sites in any country around the world, you'll find that quite close to one of these sacred sites is a religious institution or building or church or mosque or um synagogue or there'll always be a religious site close to one of these sacred sites 
It won't be on top of it, but it'll be close to it. Because this is literally a visual of the net, if you like, or the false net that has been created, which is just visually, if you look at how they build these sites on the side of the sacred sites. Mm. So it's a false net that has been superimposed over the original net of sacred sites, but just moved slightly a couple of degrees out of sync. Now, these ancient sites work on what we call the morphogenetic grids, and the morphogenetic grids are the same as your Akashic records. The Akashic records are, if you really want to put it very simply, information. And if you think of what that word is, information. Huh. That's something that's in the process of forming. So your Akashic records are not fixed. They're fluid. They're in formation, as you are. You're always in formation. And we're always becoming something else. We're never fixed at one particular thing. So the importance of remembering past lives is so that you can directly know that your ego in this 3D world, because a lot of the work that you do when you're doing this journey um, of self-discovery is to get the ego out of the way as we mentioned before. And the idea of remembering and the process of remembering past lives leaves the ego with no choice, leaves the ego that tells you there's a beginning, a middle and an end, that um, when you die, there's nothing more. That aspect that you need to move out of the way is moved naturally out of the way once you have continuity of memory of past lives. And we're told this in the part of the book of Coming Forth by Light in Hour 5, as I mentioned before, where the heart is weighed against the balance of the feather. And if the heart is as light or lighter than the feather, then the student can pass on to the next hour or the next step. But if the heart is not as light as the feather, then the composite character that I told you called Amit um, consumes the soul. So we're told in the book of Coming Forth by Light or the Book of the Dead consumes the soul of the student. Well, that's really um, symbolic for saying that the person that does not pass the fifth hour where the weighing of the heart takes place is sent back in to the reincarnation cycle of the 3D realm without memory, without knowledge, without any knowledge of this, what we talk about here, without of this higher dimensional yeah. information. And to the ancient people of the mystery schools, to the masters and students and teachers of the mystery schools, being sent to a life or a place or a dimension that had no knowledge of this divine source, no memory of its own infinite potential and creative ability, to the ancient mind, that was hell. Yeah, actually, so Ahmet, he devours your memory. Yeah. He doesn't devour your heart. He devours your memory. No, he devours your memory. If you're, your heart, remember we said um, in the physical world, your brain produces an electrical field and your heart produces a magnetic field. Right. And together they produce an electromagnetic field that surrounds the body. Your work field. And the Vitruvian man um, yeah, by doing with the you. arms out mm -hmm. reached shows the circumference of the circle of energy that surrounds every physical human being. And that is basically your light body. Yeah. That is your light body. And your that is field. And that is your Akashic Records. Yes. That's also your Akashic Records. Well, one thing I just remembered um, is that in your when you're when you're born, um, we were discussing once, in your auric field are light codes. So they're basically geometry that is basically um, it's all the knowledge. It is your Akashic Records. So when you go on a journey with you or you go down this path of self-discovery, you can activate that information that you were born with, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's Your energy field contains all the information that's written in all the sites. Your energy field contains the book of coming forth by light. Yeah. You are the book of coming forth by light. Because you are light. And what you're doing is, um, when you physically go into the sites, what you're doing is you're activating that in the third dimension. Because... In truth, there is actually no movement. I know we say we ascend and that kind of gives the vision that you move up somewhere or something like yeah. that. But there actually is no physical movement. It's um, 
yeah, it's a it's a it's a quantum leap in the way you view yourself and the world and the creation and your who you are and what you are and how you interact with where you are. Um, a and a shift. That's the word. Yeah. You know, we mentioned about this false grid, if you like, of energy. And that false grid of energy, if we look at it today, you know, it's... And when I say the false grid, I mean the 3D world, where Everywhere. we're all connected into this these different systems, you know, of each country, for example, different government systems that we might be connected into. Tax systems, payment systems. Um, debt slavery. Well, debt slavery, yeah. The way we're all... Um, you know, even our transport systems, like our communication systems, the whole three D world is based on a fallen energy. Yes. So when I say um, fallen energy, I just give you an example. Of what I mean, I mean, there's no such thing as fallen energy. Energy is energy. What I mean is the use, how it's been used, is what I mean. Mm. So, for example, um, how we uh, use electrical wire sorry copper wires to um transmit electricity into households for example we use wires to transmit electricity well you know if we look back at for example nikola tesla even in the late 1800s the he was using crystals sender and receiver crystals um and so you know and being broadcast through the airwaves rather than things being broadcast through copper cable you know mm. that's what i mean by a fallen I, maybe I should say a fallen technology rather than a fallen energy. The way we use technology now is for control. Well, it's not for enlightenment. For example, if you look at a television yeah. in every household, practically all over the world, that television could actually be used to broadcast enlightening information that every human being could tap into and um, benefit from. And benefit by. But it's actually used to co- to broadcast Fear. Hellraiser, fear and Big Brother, and so, and it, of course they're called programs for a reason <laughs> because your mind is being programmed by these things. But what I wanted to say about all the sites when we take them all together, all the sacred sites, they act as a morphogenetic field, and a morphogenetic field is basically the same as um, a holographic field or a hologram. So we're talking about instantaneous communication faster than telepathy instantaneous communication um within this energy field if you like there's no time delay between the transmitter and the receiver einstein called it spooky action at a distance (laughs) so in a morphogenetic field information can be transmitted instantaneously and is transmitted instantaneously and we can see that the way we see For example, all species share a morphogenetic field. And when we look at loads of birds flying and all of a sudden they change direction. Or fish, shoals of fish, and suddenly they all at the same time change direction. Well, how do they know all to do it at the same time? Because they all received an instantaneous communication. Yeah, they don't think about it, they do it. Now the thing is, human beings, all nature has its morphogenetic fields. So when when I say like energy grids, I don't mean that it's just one. You know, there's loads of them. There's energy fields upon energy, energy grids, energy grids. So um, human beings have their own morphogenetic field, you know. Na- different plants would have their own. Every species has its own morphogenetic Everything field. Everything has. Yeah. Every species mm-hmm. has its own morphogenetic field. It's how they communicate. members of the same species communicate with each other instantaneously.